What's going on YouTube? So since 2020, the Corvette has been rocking a new mid-engine platform that completely changed the very DNA. But even though this American icon is more like a European exotic than ever before, it is still 100% Corvette. And for 2022, Chevy has made some minor changes to the Corvette to add to the driving experience and make people envy the beautiful machine in your driveway even more. We've had the amazing privilege to sample this Corvette for the last week. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see if this is the best sports car in America. All right, so let's kick things off here with the exterior design. Now, of course, this is a very good looking sports car. This definitely takes the prize for the most attention we've ever gotten in a press vehicle, especially here in Kentucky. Since it is built in Bowling Green, Kentucky, it's basically every Kentuckian's dream car. Now, of course, right up here in the front, you're gonna notice it's a Corvette right away. You have that really aggressive hood tight body lines that lead right down to that Corvette emblem. And then you've got the super angular front end design. We have the dark gray accents package. So this is finished in a dark gray. We also have the optional lower splitter. So this just kind of lowers it down, gives it a little bit even meaner look. And this is new for 2022 as well. Now, speaking of lower, um, obviously that does mean you're lower to the ground, lower to scraping things, but we do have the front end lift, which can raise the vehicle by two inches. Very, very convenient feature, and it saves with your GPS location. Now, of course, you can finish this area as well as many other elements of the vehicle in carbon fiber if you prefer. And obviously, all the vents you see on this whole vehicle are fully functional, including this brake cooling duct. Then as we go up here to our headlights, obviously you are gonna have full LED headlights. They have a very angular design. And of course, as you can see, you do have the daytime running light as well as the turn signal indicator. Now, what sports car would be complete without some good looking and highly functional wheels and tires? And indeed, that's what we have here with the Corvette. So you do have a standard 19 inch alloy wheel. Those have that kind of plain silver finish. However, we do have the optional model with the contrast and the gray accents, I think looks quite a bit better. They are 19 inches in the front, but they're 20 inches in the back. So we do have the, t the staggered tire setup, eight and a half inches wide in the front, 11 inches wide in the back, because you obviously you got to put that power to the ground. In terms of the tire, we do have Michelin Pilot Sport all seasons on this specific example. And since we don't have the Z51 package on this model, the brakes are a little bit smaller than the Z51. It's gonna be 12.6 inch, four piston Brembo vented brakes. And finally, we do also have the red brake calipers, which is optional. I do apologize, it's a little bit dirty since it did rain on us on our way out here to film. And then of course, checking out the mirrors, they're actually fully loaded with all the features in addition to just being generally aerodynamically designed. So it does mean you have auto dimming, heating, power folding, as well as blind spot monitoring. All right guys, so we'll start this side out as we normally do. So we'll talk about the length first. This is coming in at 182.3 inches in overall length, but I know you're probably not super concerned with just the length and how it fits in. This is a Corvette after all. Let's talk about some cool stuff. So let's talk about what this is. This model is the coupe. However, since this is a Stingray Corvette, you can actually detach this part of the roof. So you can kind of think about it as a convertible, but it doesn't have like the power functionality. Now, if you would prefer to get the power functionality, you can get that because the Corvette is available in a convertible version. Now, as far as this one right here, you can actually get a transparent roof. You can get carbon fiber options, whatever you want for this roof area, you can get on the Corvette. In addition to that, we do have this really cool element right here. This is the side blade. And of course, this is the mid-engine Corvette. So what this is doing is feeding in the air to cool off that big, burly 6.2 liter V8 under the hood here. But let's work our way around to the back. 
whooshy mama this is a good looking car i love the way this corvette looks of course we've had this car for a week and this gets attention like nobody's business and for good reason because this is a gorgeous design it has a very low and wide stance giving it that just muscular design and let's break down a few of the elements that give it that just beautiful design so up here at the top, we do have a lip spoiler. This is optional. Um, you can get various different options. This is kind of the more tasteful version, a little bit more classy. And then if we drop down to the taillight area, you will notice that we have beautiful full LED taillights. These have a lot of three-dimensional design elements, which I'm a big fan of. And in addition to that, we do also have dynamic turn signals, which is just an extra premium touch. Coming down, we have some more uh, air vents. And then for your diffuser area, this is gonna be very aggressively designed as you would expect out of a Corvette. We do have it finished in this nice gray color. And then off to the side of that, you will notice, of course, the quad exhaust outlets. So quad exhaust outlets are standard on every single Corvette. However, this particular model does have the optional exhaust system. And let me just tell you, this has an absolutely amazing sound. Well guys, that certainly sounds good. It's also worth noting that performance exhaust does give you a little bit more power, which we'll talk about in the test drive portion. Now, as far as your warranty information, as well as your safety information, I'm gonna keep this pretty simple because the safety information, there's no safety systems available at all on the Corvette. Um, so that means forward emergency braking, auto high beams, lane keeping assist, and adaptive cruise are not offered. So that's kind of an interesting touch. I'm really not sure why Chevy didn't offer that at least as a package on this Corvette, but it is not available. Now, as far as your warranty information, you have three year, 36,000 miles of basic warranty, five year, 60,000 miles of powertrain warranty. But guys, this Corvette is certainly a stunner on the outside, but the interior is also equally as gorgeous. So let's check that out first before we take it out in a spin. Walking up to the Corvette, you do have a specific Corvette key fob. As you can see, nice materials, metal here on the side. Plenty of buttons, including a standard remote start system for the intelligent entry. And then to get inside, just like with past versions of the Corvette, there's a pad back here underneath of this um, area. You just press and it will unlock. So as you can see, you do have some really cool animations. And of course, this cabin, guys, is absolutely stunning. So let's go ahead and start there by talking about our different material and color choices as always. So on both the 1LT and the 2LT, you have standard Milan leather, and you've got four different choices. That's gonna be black, gray, brown, or adrenaline red. However, since we have the 3LT, this is, of course, the highest end version of the cabin and it comes in a full Napa leather, and you've got 18 different choices. So you can basically customize this interior almost any way you want it. Uh, what we have on this specific example is known as Morello Red, and basically that means we have red from head to toe. It is absolutely stunning to set inside. Now, in terms of the seats themselves, you're probably noticing that they look really cool. These are known as the GT2 seats. They're standard on the 3LT. Basically, uh, what Chevy says, this is the best combination between performance and comfort. And I can attest to that. They look really cool. They hold you in place really nicely, but they are also very comfortable to set in. Like I was saying earlier, you do have the full Napa leather with the perforation there. Up here in the seat itself, it is a single piece and the back part is made of carbon fiber. So really, really cool looking. 
And as far as the seats themselves, they are going to be eight-way power adjusting, and you can get more aggressive competition seats if you prefer that. Well, let's go ahead and start talking about your cabin materials, because like I said, this is a beautiful cabin, not just for a Corvette and compared to previous generations, but in general, this is an absolutely gorgeous and well-executed cabin. So starting out over here with our door trim, we have leather across the entire thing. Uh, as you can tell, of course, everything is going to be finished in red with this color. It goes all the way down to even the lower door trim with the double color contrast stitching. We also have the large Alcantara insert right through there. Genuine brushed aluminum around the window switches as well as these beautiful metal speaker grills. Two-person memory seating will come on the 2LT and the 3LT trim levels. As we continue on, more beautiful leather all across the upper dashboard. It's a little hard to see, but there's this cool floating effect to the leather. Uh, so it actually hovers above these speaker grills right there. Really cool. All of this is finished again in the leather. The color contrast stitching goes all down through here. Obviously, this is a very driver-centric cockpit. Everything just kind of envelops around you, including the screen, which is pointed almost exclusively toward me. And then we have full Alcantara over here on the dashboard, except for down here on the armrest and below that, which are going to be covered again in the beautiful leather. But let's do the fun part. Let's start this bad boy up. Mm -hmm. Sounds so good. Now, after you get over the thrill of the initial startup, here are your gauges. This is a 12 inch digital setup, as you can tell. Very nice looking graphics. Of course, things do change depending on which drive mode you're in, so I can cycle to the touring mode here and as you can see it does change the design a little laggy but other than that the graphics are very nice looking and then in addition to that well, i'm having trouble getting the right angle here there we go we do have a large head-up display as well this uh, also changes depending on the drive mode so where i was just in sport we had a g-force reading at the top there and a uh, circular tachometer so pretty cool now, as we pull back to the steering wheel, this is one of the most distinct elements of this cabin because it's square. This is the actual square wheel. Um, really nice though in practice. I love the way this feels in the hand. Really nice grip when you're driving fast or even when you're just cruising, you have like a nice place to rest your arm. As far as the materials, of course, full leather, even the airbag cover, all of this is finished in a genuine black aluminum. And as far as the wheel itself, it is going to be power adjusting. We also have steering wheel heating since that comes on the 2LT and the 3LT. Okay, so interior storage. I have to talk about it, even though this is not, of course, the most practical vehicle, but we do have a little bit of storage right here. This is actually your wireless phone charging pad, so you can just slide your phone in there. It will stay in place, so it's pretty nice. We also have a big speaker grill right there with the Corvette branding. Looks really nice. In terms of the center console here, it does open up to the side like so. As you can see, it is not super large. It's certainly not going to be large enough to fit in our full stack of coupons, but you can cut individual ones out and queue them up right there. Still works for those purposes. Uh, we do also have two USB ports right there. And then you've got your two cup holders underneath of that uh, Alcantara area. Now, moving on from storage though, up in front of that we have a really cool shifter. It is a push button style as you can tell, but it has a really cool operation. You pull this back like so, really satisfying the click. Of course it feels super nice. And speaking of things that feel nice, look at these gigantic real metal paddle shifters. They feel absolutely wonderful to the touch. And then when we head into reverse, of course, you're going to be greeted with a standard backup camera. We do have active trajectory and parking sensors. Um, you can change a few different views, uh, but even when you're in park, you can always go over here. If you have the 2LT and 3LT, that is, and press that button right there, that's going to activate your front camera. So this basically is looking down on the nose there in case there is uh, any worry that you're going to scrape on something like a driveway or a speed bump or something like that, you can check into that feature. And speaking of that, we do have a very important feature, I think, for this model. I would highly recommend it. We have the front end lift. So that's gonna be located right there. 
Now right underneath of this, we do have a nice roller here. It's a little hard to see from this angle, but this is what changes your different drive modes. Excuse me, let me switch over to that so you can actually see. Uh, but as you rotate through that, it will tell you which mode you're in, uh, how that affects the steering, the suspension, the brake feel, and the engine sound. And of course, you can make custom drive modes, including this really cool Z button that you can press at any time. Let's talk about one of the more controversial elements of this cabin, and that is this elevated portion right here with all of these buttons. At first, when you look at this, it is very overwhelming to have every single button located down in one column. However, I will say after living with the vehicle, it's quite easy to get used to once you understand which section is for the driver and which section is for the passenger. Um, so you do have some general climate controls right there in the middle driver and passenger. So it's pretty easy to keep up with in the grand scheme of things. Also very accessible to your hand so you don't have to reach very far to go ahead and adjust this dual zone climate control setup and you also see it on the screen as well. Now in terms of the seats we do have uh, heated seats and we also have the ventilated seats. So even with these really cool GT2 seats you can get seat ventilation. Get your air vent kind of blended in right below the display. And we do have a physical volume knob for the audio system. So you got a standard 10 speaker sound system. However, 2LT and 3LT come with the 14 speaker Bose Performance Series sound system, which is what we have today. And let's go ahead and give it a sample. sound quality of this system is actually very very good I say actually I'm not surprised but I uh, did kind of think that maybe they wouldn't spend that much time working on the audio system considering how great that engine right behind you sounds all right and let's talk a second about our technology we have on board here so first and foremost you'll notice that we are in the Android Auto ecosystem that's because the system does have both wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay abilities. This is an 8-inch display. It is standard. Like I was saying, it is heavily, heavily angled towards the driver. So if you're the passenger, you may not be able to use it, but that's okay since the driver really should be the focus in a vehicle like this. Going into the main Chevy Infotainment 3 system, it is the same as in many of their other models. You do have the built-in navigation system on most of the Corvettes. And in addition to that, I, you do have a special function here. This is PDR, Performance Data Recorder. Uh, this is packaged with that front-facing camera. It does give you the ability to start a recording and you know watch back you, uh, you know, on the racetrack or something like that, um, or even just record. Uh, you've probably seen those viral videos of like the service person <laughs> taking it out for a joyride. You can turn this on to automatically record. That way you'll see if anyone does any shenanigans inside of your car at a valet or something like that. Pretty cool. Now moving on up, so long as you choose the 2LT or the 3LT, you will get this frameless auto dimming mirror. Flip this switch though and it is the rear camera mirror. So of course, when you're looking back in a mid-engine sports car like this, you do see mostly the engine. So actually I do appreciate having this uh, rear camera mirror because you can flip that and it's gonna cut out that back obstruction so you have a clearer view of who's behind you. And then furthermore, of course, you do have your um, Homelink remotes located right there. And then finally, up at the top here, we do have the full Alcantara headliner because we've got the premium version of the cabin. Looks absolutely lovely. Of course, there's not a sunroof, but the roof itself does come completely off. And once again, if you want kind of a sunroof like experience you can't even get a transparent panel if you want now of course with this Corvette you do not have rear seats so I'm starting out today by talking about some of the cargo capacity and the usability that way now of course this is not the most practical car but since it is now mid-engine we actually do have two different places to store cargo so I'll start out back here in the back so in order to open this up 
you just locate the button under the lid. There is also a release on the key fob as well as on the door trim. And if you open this up, this is gonna be your larger amount of space back here. So this is your cargo department. Now, of course, the engine is up there. We'll talk about that in just a second. It's a beautiful engine, but this is gonna be your larger area to store stuff. As you can see, for reference, we have all of our camera gear stored back here, and it does fit actually surprisingly well. You know, for a mid-engine sports car like this, it's very impressive that we can fit all of our camera gear. We even have a winter coat thrown in. Um, now, what Chevy does design this for is actually to fit the roof. So you can actually take that roof panel off and throw that in this back area. But now let's go ahead and check out the front trunk. And also I do want to point out this area is a soft close mechanism. So you just gently push it down and it will go ahead and suck itself closed. But let's go ahead and go up there to the front trunk. Now in order to open this up, Chevy actually has included a button underneath of the headlight. So if you look up under here, you will notice there's a button that will release the front trunk. Of course, there is also buttons on the fob. Now up here, I'm also pleasantly surprised by the amount of space. Um, this is definitely big enough to fit a couple uh, weekend bags because it goes down really deep. As you can see, this is an ice scraper. For reference, look how deep it is. It's really impressively deep. We also have a 12 volt outlet as well as some LED illumination inside. So really this Corvette is more practical than you would think for a two seater like this. Now the passenger seat is obviously a great place to be. And not only is the seat comfortable and hug you in well, you do still have the same power adjustments as you do on the driver's side, which is certainly a nice touch. You even have the lumbar support and we're not done yet because we also have two person memory seating. So for the two people that get to ride along in this car, you do have your memory seats for both sides. Now, as far as the glove box is concerned, in order to open that up, there is a button integrated right here. And also for this model, we have the full Alcantara lined glove box right there. As you can see, when we open it up, we have some coupons blowing around. This is actually really large. Once again, sound a little bit like a broken record, but I'm surprised by how much space you get in this Corvette because you could fit quite a bit of stuff in here. It's also nicely felt lined, has illumination. And then up top, we do have another Alcantara wrapped piece for the sun visor. And then opening it up, we have LED illumination as well as a mirror, and we can also detach it as well as extend it out, although it is a little bit shallow in terms of the overall depth. Now, of course, you can gaze at that beautiful engine through the glass piece there, but I'm sure you probably just want to open it up and see what it's really like. Now, of course, this is the mid-engine Corvette. So the engine is in the mid of the vehicle. And this is not just any engine. This is, of course, the 6.2 liter LT2 V8. This makes 490 horsepower, 470 pound-feet of torque, 495 horsepower if you go for the optional exhaust package. And of course, this thing is going to be an absolute beast to get on the road. But we wanted to show you guys what the actual engine bay itself looks like, of course. It is a gorgeous engine bay. You can also option on a few uh, different accessories if you want like a carbon fiber area back here. You can get those uh, features if you want to customize your Corvette up to exactly what you want. But now let's go ahead and take this baby out on the road. I know it's going to be a lot of fun. surprises you every time wow. just how fast this thing can go obviously this is like the fastest Corvette Stingray ever um, one of the fastest Corvettes ever as well I mean the standard Corvette here goes 0 to yeah. 60 in under three seconds mentioning on the outside we've got the 6.2 liter LT2 V8 490 horsepower 470 pound-feet of torque <laughs> The 
this particular model does have 495 horsepower so if we're really getting technical you have that five additional horsepower for going for the performance exhaust um, obviously the performance exhaust does make the exhaust system better we have not sampled out the regular exhaust I'm sure it still sounds good but all I can say and testify about is this performance exhaust and this sounds ruthless it is absurd yes. like the whole neighborhood will be woken up every single time you start this car and that is an amazing thing so that's right your neighbors might not like you when you start up cold start on the sport mode but <laughs> you'll enjoy it and that's what's important now if you're looking for a performance figure um, this thing goes 0 to 60 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds. Now, I'm sure, given the conditions uh, that we were in today, the launches that we just did were not quite 2.8 seconds, I wouldn't imagine, but it's still incredibly fast. Like, sitting behind, just in the, in the, in the cockpit as we accelerated like that, it does not feel like a Corvette because to a Corvette, you just kind of imagine, I don't know, just like doing a burnout and not really getting somewhere super fast, and this is not the case for this all-new one. because you could never shift yourself this no. well. I mean, it's absolutely lightning fast. Right now we're in the sport mode, um, but as you can see, I'm using the paddle shifters. The second I click it, I mean, the, no hesitation whatsoever, we get that downshift or upshift. It, and uh, when it's left to its own as well, you know, basically it's uh, telepathic in the sense yeah. I'm never thinking, oh gosh, I wish it would go ahead and shift or whatever. It, it knows what you need based on going around corners and the steering input <laughs> yeah absolutely at home on a country road like this talk about the uh, steering and the handling because this obviously being the mid-engine Corvette a big part of the reason they switched to this was to bring up that limit you know because there is a limit of what you can do with a big V8 hanging out front and rear drive this gives you that balance so you've got 60% of your weight on the rear the other 40% in the front so we're really nicely balanced and you can definitely feel that when you're going around corners show you guys as you can see obviously as you'd expect very limited body roll um, really nice and buttoned down we do have the magnetic dampers on this uh, version as well this is version 4.0 so it's the most sophisticated that uh, General Motors has ever made and just gives you that great balance between um, you know, when you're in a sport mode like this excellent excellent performance and then you also have comfort which we can talk about later on but no yeah. one cares about that as much as Yeah, we're saving that for the <laughs> latter part of yeah, this yeah, drive, yeah. for sure. <laughs> I also want to talk about the uh, steering. As you'd expect, it is very good. It's actually a little lighter than what I was expecting, uh, having never driven this Corvette before. Um, and also, we did have the Toyota GR86 for the <laughs> last week, which that... Unfortunate timing for this yeah, bet. Yeah. <laughs> that obviously is like, you know, super pure in the way of its handling and steering characteristic. This though is just lightning fast on the steering. As soon as you make any type of small movement, you get an immediate response. 
And once again, it's just really confidence inspiring when you're out on a country road like this. You feel very comfortable even though you have just a ton of power. And we're, by the way, nowhere near testing the limits of oh, this no. on this drive. <laughs> nowhere near. You have to have a racetrack to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, guys, I think this is... Mm. <laughs> One of the best sounding <gasps> motors. Oh my gosh, it sounds so flippin' good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now, of course, there are some practical elements to discuss in the test drive part. Um, so I guess I'll start knocking a few of those off. Uh, of course. Oh, shifter. Yeah, down I mean, we, calm down a little. we do have to talk <laughs> about it. Now, the Corvette, one of the really unique things about this is that it's kind of a Grand Touring vehicle uh, in the sense, of course, it's very sporty if you have it in sport mode. However, if you just put it in touring mode, and as we've seen throughout the past seven days that we've had this car, just cruising down in a normal fashion down a highway or a regular road, this thing is really comfortable. Um, I know Drew mentioned on the inside of this video, we have the GT2 seats, which maximizes the sport um, hugging you in, as well as the comfort. And I have to say, I would highly recommend getting these seats because they are very comfortable, um, yet they still hug you in well. Um, and just overall, the ride quality with the magnetic dampers is surprisingly good. Like, I was not expecting this Corvette to drive and ride as good as it does. So that's certainly something to keep in mind that this is not just a hardcore sports car. This is also kind of a Grand Touring vehicle that you can take on road trips with you and one other person. And then as far as other everyday livable aspects, uh, let's talk about the fuel economy. So we're looking at 15 city, 27 highway, 19 combined. Of course, this does use premium uh, fuel. Now, honestly, our average so far this week is 13.9. We've been driving pretty heavy footed, as you would expect out of a Corvette and mostly city driving. So I think you will hit that city figure. Um, and really 27 on the highway is not a bad figure at all, especially because this car has cylinder deactivation. It can go down to a V4 uh -huh. if you're just slowly cruising along. So that definitely helps with the fuel economy figure. And guys, we are in Kentucky after all, that we're where this Corvette is made. <laughs> Here in the proud state of Kentucky of this car. So let's go ahead and do our slam dunk and air ball. Our slam dunk today really, I don't even know how I can narrow it down to one thing. I would say maybe just the driving experience and include the engine in that all encompassing side of things there. Um, it's just really an incredible driving vehicle. Sounds amazing, super powerful. What else is there to say? <laughs> Tremendous grip. Yeah. And then on the airball side of things, if we can say something bad about this, I really am disappointed about the safety systems. You heard me talk about it on the outside. I really don't know why Chevy didn't include the safety systems. Maybe an engineer can enlighten me down below in the comment section. Probably but has to do with weight, it, but come on, still... but you know, it's a Grand Touring car. Where I want adaptive yeah. cruise. I want you know all of the safety systems that's going to keep me safe. So, um, Chevy, please include that on the future model years. We're sitting at a consistent 64 decibels even. Now, um, I do want to point out, I think it's relatively quiet inside this cabin. You're definitely not getting road noise or wind noise. You're just getting engine noise. So that's, a, that's of course, a pretty high reading for our decibel reader here, but you want to hear that noise, so that's certainly not much of a con. Right, and, and I'm sure you're losing some insulation yeah. from having a really lightweight removable roof. And discuss another practical element how much is this corvette going to cost you and that's one of my favorite things about this car because this is such a performance bargain we are looking at sixty two thousand one hundred ninety five dollars as our starting point for <laughs> getting into this community the corvette community here the starting point for that um, if you go up to the 3lt what we have today you're looking at seventy four thousand one forty five as a starting point 
and pulling out the sticker for this one this is a pretty heavily optioned 3LT so we have a lot of the he uh, higher ticket cost options uh, plus the 1295 destination we're looking at 83,770 um, now of course there are a few other performance bits that you can add in to make this cost really almost as much as you want it to cost um, but really just want to hammer in on the cost side of things you cannot get anything with this level of performance Gosh. anywhere close to this price point especially a mid-engine super uh, sports car not going to happen so this is really a bargain and that's why you see wait times of years for some of these models right but to conclude here guys of course we could just drive this around absolutely all day because it is a phenomenal sports car i mean there's just so many good things about this Corvette. And like Mason was saying, you take all that just fantastic performance, fantastic sound, great interior experience, and package it inside of actually a good deal. Um, you know, like I uh, was thinking before, with the Z06 coming out, it's hard to even imagine, like, where does Chevy go from here? Because this Stingray Corvette is that good. Well guys, we really appreciate you making it this far in our in-depth review of the 2022 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray 3LT. Now, of course, this was an amazing vehicle to have for the last week. And if you're lucky enough to buy one of these, we of course highly recommend that. Now, if you're new to our channel, please hit that subscribe button down below. We would really appreciate it. It helps us get more cars like this to show you all. And also follow us on TikTok and Instagram where we have other forms of content. Anyway, we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies. What's going on YouTube? Now, of course, to start my section out, the Corvette does not have rear seats, so I'm not going to be sitting back in the rear area because this is just a two. What? What are you laughing at me? What did I say? You got anything to fix your hair? I don't. Oh my gosh, it's so ridiculous. Say it